Welcome to the Flames of War field manual from the Dice Gods. In this video we're going to talk about the overview of a game of Flames of War version 4, along with some core terms and ideas you'll need to know. Most of those terms and ideas we'll cover in more depth in future videos, but the broad strokes will help make things make a bit more sense as we go along. As ever, commenting on this video will enter you into our draw to win one of two copies of the Hit the Beach two-player starter set for Flames of War, with one coming with a set of terrain from Microart Studio. The first comment you make on each field menu video will enter you into the draw. Entries close at midnight Central European time on the 5th of March 2023, with the winners drawn a week later. The field manual is, as we are sure you know by now, supported by Microart Studio and their soon to be released 15mm World War II Normandy pre painted scenery range. The range should be out in March 2023. Microart Studio have also given us a 10% discount code which is valid until the end of June 2023, which works store wide and is on screen now. As with any game, Flames of War version 4 has some core ideas and a structure to the game which it helps to know before you start. So that's what we're going to start on today. Before you begin the game, you'll need to decide on three things. Which era of the game you'll be playing in, the size of game you want to play, and either which mission you want to play or how this will be decided on the day. Era is fairly simple. You're either playing mid war or late war in version 4. The latest miniature and sourcebook releases for Flames of War version 4 are all late war as of February 2023. Although there are mid war starter sets and a book covering all armies, collecting a range of different units for mid war can be a little tricky at this point as stock is low and has been for some time. This means that we do recommend late war for newer players into the system. With your era decided, if you're looking to play Late War, you'll need to make a choice as to whether you plan to play a specific set of sourcebooks or to be a bit more flexible. Sourcebooks cover the units which operated during a specific battle, theatre or time in the Late War. So, for example, there are sourcebooks covering the D-Day era for Americans, British, Germans and Waffen-SS. By sticking to armies from sourcebooks of the same set, You'll find the armies fairly balanced against each other and therefore have a fairly balanced gaming experience. But this means that you'll never play hypothetical games such as Americans versus Soviet forces, as the Americans and Soviets were both on the same side and, for most of the war, operating on different fronts. You'll only really have that sort of balanced same source book if you use the Berlin portion of the Flames of War timeline and if you allow friendly versus friendly games. It is also possible within the rules of the game to pick units from different source books in the same list. This is a nice addition but not something we ever really do or feel the need for. If you're new, try and stick to units and formations from one book. It'll keep your brain intact longer. For your first few games we recommend sticking to Axis versus Allies games with forces chosen from sourcebooks of the same set, so all sourcebooks from D-Day or Bulge etc. Life will be much simpler and the balance much closer. By size of game we mean how many points you have available to spend on units and command cards. The more points you have, the more units, the bigger and longer the game will be, usually. Most games of Flames of War are at 100 points, though newer gamers might find life a little bit more manageable at 50 or 75 points. For the more competitive amongst you, Battlefront has set the standard late war tournament game to 111 points for 2023, so if that's the direction you plan to go, that's the points you'll have to spend on toys. We will cover list writing in the field manual at a later point, but the key things you need to know are that each source book contains a number of formations. Formations represent a specific brigade or equivalent of an army which fought during the period which the source book covers. You can pick which formation you use. This then defines the unit you take in your core formation, with compulsory choices being in black on the formation chart and optional choices being in grey. Obviously you have to take one from each of the black boxes and you can take some from the grey boxes if you wish. You may then add support units to your formation when the minimum requirements for your chosen formation have been met. 
having a robust core formation is important, but we will discuss why that's the case in a minute. Next, you'll either need to select a mission from the rulebook or sourcebook, or plan to use the mission selection method in the rulebook to find out what you're going to actually be playing. Flames of War is a very mission-based system which integrates objective capture and control, reserves, ambush and minefield mechanics in varying ways to differentiate the missions and add flavour to your games. For newer players, choosing the mission beforehand will help you to plan your list to complete the objective. Conversely, having a random mission rolled up just before the game starts encourages a more flexible approach to list writing and is more interesting for experienced players. With these selected and agreed, you'll need to write your lists and set up a table both of which are topics for a future video. Then it's game time. The number of turns and time your game will take will depend on a few things, your experience, army size, and the missions you play. But for around 100 points, allow two to two and a half hours of actual playtime. Games of Flames of War take place over a number of turns with some missions defining a minimum number of turns and others not. In each turn, the first player will activate each unit within their army once, and then the second player will activate each unit in their army once. Then we move on to the next turn. These player turns are split into four main steps, which the player runs through one after the other. When these are done, the player's turn ends and the next player has their turn. We will be producing videos on each of these steps, but to whet your appetite, these steps are the starting step, the movement step, the shooting step, and the assault step. No prizes for guessing what happens in each. Games are completed in one of two situations. First, if one player meets the victory conditions as set out in the mission that they're playing, then they win. Shocking, I know. Second, if the formation or formations of one player are damaged enough that they run away, then the other player wins. This is why it's important to have a robust core formation. If everything is as small and as cheap as possible, then the enemy can focus on destroying your formation over playing the mission. So that's the wide view of a game of Flames of War. In the next video, we'll take a look at reading missions, selecting missions, random and reserves. For now, that's it. Don't forget to comment on this video to be in with a chance to win a Hit the Beach set. Thanks again to Microsoft Studio for the support and don't forget to make some shameless use of their discount code. Don't also forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so that YouTube knows we're worth showing to other gamers. As ever, if you love what we do, consider joining our Patreon for even more goodies. Thanks for watching and we will see you again soon.